Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fantasy Fireside, where myself and Colin will be discussing various elements of Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, we do have a reason why we, we particularly chose this subject in particular. In the last episode, our first episode, we did a a uh, kind of a, a quick recce of the entire world and we, we talked about the various factions and places in the world but we forgot to mention the vampire counts and we had several comments saying excuse me where is the stuff about the vampire counts so as an apology for that we've decided that our second episode will be about the vampire counts as a sort of you know it's, as a way to say sorry and hopefully uh, th this will be a fun discussion because I know you and Hal in particular, Colin, have, have spoken occasionally about the vampire counts and I've all been like, oh, you seem to be quite into it. Indeed. So hopefully it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be a worthwhile subject. Yeah, hopefully. And uh, like you said, you summed it up well. I need to cross this out of the, <laughs> uh, our fans' book of grudges, this mm. immense sin. I... Uh, I, 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 I'm assuming what just happened was I was just... I'm so used to just breezing through them in total war that I didn't even think about them. It's like, oh, it's just another imperial province. Don't need to worry about it. <laughs> just oh. drink blood. It's fine. They're, they're basically humans. Like, no, no, no. We can't have that law crime. Yeah, oh. pretty much. They're they're just pale people. Uh, yeah. but here we're gonna we're gonna fix that. Now to preface pre that and, and yes to preface for everyone that apparently a hard word for me to say. <laughs> it's mostly going to be about kind of the history of how the vampire counts in Sylvania came to be and Sylvania itself mm -hmm. because there's a lot of different vampires in Warhammer. Uh, Andy, do you know anything about the game uh, Vampire the Masquerade or any of that? Um, I know so, a little bit, yeah. I, I, I've seen, I've seen uh, snarky reviews by YouTubers mm. who say it's really good and also a bit silly. So that's my, the extent of my knowledge. Yeah. It's uh, I, I've done a little bit of reading into the tabletop game itself, but honestly, my true knowledge is not far beyond that either. But the vampires in Warhammer, uh, I'm not going to get into the matter of who ripped off who uh, because <laughs> I don't know. But it's a very similar kind of deal. There's different bloodlines. They all do different sorts of things. And if we were going to cover all of them. This video would probably triple in length and be even more okay. droning on than it is already going to be. Well, was, without droning on too much, so do you know all the main factions that we could mention other than Sylvania, just so we, we can give like a very, like a teaser biscuit of like, here, this is the various ones, but we're talking about Sylvania in particular, just so we don't leave people in the lurch with, with curiosity about what the other ones are if they want to research on their own. Sure. So we have the uh, the blind the the bloodlines of them are, and the first one is going to be the one we're going to be talking about most. The von Karsteins. Mm -hmm. They're uh, very much the Warhammer, Warhammerified uh, traditional. You know, uh, Dracula. They want to suck your blood. Uh, <laughs> they, they they even all talk in the old ye olde English. They live in Castlevania. Oh, Castle. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thou, yeah. thou darest is something if you play Total War, Manfred will very frequently say to you. Uh, oh, interacting okay. with them. They talk like that. There's the Blood Dragons, who are just knights uh, who use, use their vampiri vampirism to become the ultimate warrior. And they have nothing to do with Far Cry 3 DLC. They, do, still. they do not. There are no robot T-Rexes, which though. is... Oh. Definitely unfortunate, because, God, that DLC was great. It's so good. All the neon. Ugh. Oh, oh man. Now, now I want to go play Blood Dragon, so I know what I'm doing <laughs> after we're done here. <laughs> uh, but before I wander off to do that, the next is the Lamians, who are the... They're very stealthy. Uh, the Von Karst... Pretty, most of the other vampires are quite overt about it. They're big fans of raising massive armies of the undead and trying to burn the empire down. Mm -hmm. Lamians are much more stealthy. They, uh, they're mostly women. They have spies across the world, at least where they can conceivably fit in. I don't believe there are any Skaven vampires. Uh, maybe one or two, but none that are notable, if such a thing is out there. 
Uh, mm-hmm. But the Lamians are generally, yeah, they're a lot more stealthy. They're the seductive kind of nature of vampires. Although when you said Lomi, it just reminds me of Game of Thrones with the Hound going, "What the f's a Lomi? Like, That's a Lomi. He made me a he made me a baked direwolf bread. It's great." You know, oh. they're not like that at all. Uh, they might bake bread. It's probably gonna have poison <laughs> in it, but you know, mm. it counts. Uh, okay, okay, okay. There's the Necrux, who are vampire wizards, and there's the the Strigoi, who are uh, vampire hulks. Basically, uh, like Incredible Hulks, not Hulk Hogan's. No, not Hulk Hogan's. Uh, Incredible Hulks. They uh, okay. Horrible, monstrous. Most of them are barely intelligent. Uh, they can gain intelligence eventually if they're either around long enough or eat the right thing and absorb its blood, uh, and it makes them smarterer. Uh, okay. But for the most part, barely intelligent, mad beasts uh, are right. Strigoi. And. I'm sure at some point we'll talk about the uh, the rest of them on this channel, but today is Sylvania and Von Karstein focused. Mm-hmm. And with that being said, it's time to go back in time several thousand years before Sylvania was a thing. Okay. Because the vampires all go back to someone who, by this point, you might have a bit of familiarity with, Nagash. He's, uh... Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. He, uh... Essentially what happened was... Neferata, first vampire, found his notes, and she created vampirism based on what she was, uh, studying from what he had come up with. So, you can blame him for all the wrong in the world that the vampires are going to cause, because he really is just the worst ever uh, b- before we get into it too much like are vampires kind of a neutral faction or a bad faction or a good faction like what's their kind of alignment they're definitely bad the closest to good <laughs> are the probably the lamians again and that's not because they're necessarily good it's because they're so selfishly doing what they want and it's kind of helpful yeah. is that the kind of thing it's it, they're just stealthy about it like they're va- imagine vampire illuminati and that's kind of mm. what the lamians are okay. like uh, the rest of them are much more overt. I've just raised ten thousand zombies from this graveyard. I'm going to come take you over now. Okay. Uh, I'll talk. That being said, a little bit more about vampirism later on, what it does to a person, because it'll be relevant uh, okay. later on. But mostly, they're definitely evil. Like it, usually, when chaos is the main threat, it's the vampires doing something. Okay. So, Neferata vampirism's a thing now. One of the vampires she then created was either her husband or was just some noble who created the lie that he was her husband because it makes himself look more legit. <laughs> and this guy, you know, either way, he he was uh, he was in service. He was helping the early vampires on for a while. And then he saw things were going to go real bad. Uh, so he dipped. He got out of Nehekara, the ancient land of the Tomb Kings, where Nagash is from, and where all the fun times were going on. As he was just about Nagash was about to kill everyone in there. Okay. Uh, he he saw the writing on the wall and dipped. Uh, he went to Cathay apparently for a little while. Cafe, ooh, yep. the elusive cafe. Going back to Warhammer China for a bit, and he helped advise. Uh, them on how to handle the chaos marauders that try to invade it, that place every five minutes. Mm-hmm. And then they found that he was a vampire and it was time for him to get, get out of Dodge. So he did. And after an indeterminate amount of time, he flees to the old world and changes his name to Vlad von Karstein. Okay. The progenitor of, you probably guessed it, the von Karstein bloodline. Hmm. So, change scene, let's go forward a few thousand years. 1797 and the Imperial Calendar. There's <laughs> a nobleman of the Empire Province of Sylvania named Otto, and he is about to die. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Well, he's he, kind of kind of a jerk. Uh, oh, so yeah, okay, that's fine. S- Sylvanian nobles are not <clears throat> generally not great at doing anything but being corrupt and useless, and he's no okay. exception. He's just the one in charge of the province, so... Right. He's a bit more notable for that. He has a daughter named Isabella, and his brother, the nobleman's brother, wants to marry his daughter, 
Uh, so, you know, we've got some good old classic Habsburg politicking going on here. Uh, in order to become the new ruler of Sylvania, his, you know, Isabella's father, Otto, the guy in his deathbed, obviously did not want this because, if nothing else, he wasn't a fan of the uh, family tree that's a Christmas wreath. <laughs> so he tried to marry her off, Isabella, to anyone. Problem was, the only guy he thought was worthy of it killed himself to avoid the marriage, and no one else wanted anything to do with Isabella. What did he do that for? That's uh, pretty drastic. He, he didn't want to be in a forced marriage, so clearly there was only one way out. Oh, oh okay. Kind of Kinda sad. A l- little sad. Mm, uh, yeah. But fear not, because one dark and stormy night, Vlad appears and offers his hand in marriage. Uh, Otto is pretty desperate at this point and agrees, and then he dies. Oh. Uh, Vlad celebrates this marriage by listening to Isabella's request and rips her uncle's heart out of his chest and then tosses him off Castle Drakenhof's battlements. The, uh, like you were saying, oh. ca- cast, uh, Hotel Transylvania. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this, is the, this is the main big old vampire castle. So it was like guys, the idea that like he he just like falls off the ramparts and then someone <laughs> below is like, what was that about? And then it just takes a while for for everything to click into like he didn't. I guess there was no repercussion for him chucking a guy over the ramparts. Not particularly. Uh, there were some nobles who did you know object to this random guy showing him. Why, why, why is he married? Why does he get to he's be in charge now? He's been here a day and he's already like murdered someone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that being said. Uh, Anyone who disagreed either was won over by Vlad's charisma, because, as I'll talk about, he's actually a pretty cool guy for a vampire, mm-hmm. uh, or they were just unpersoned. They just disappeared and were probably right. eaten at that. Uh, so, yeah, Vlad's now in charge and married to Isabella. And funny enough, Warhammer does not have much in the way of love stories. Uh, understandably, it's a tabletop war game. Mm. Uh, but Vlad and Isabella actually came to love each other, which I just find really cute. Uh, initially, he just wanted you know to marry her for power. He's like, well, uh, it's time to start climbing back up the social ladder. My homeland mm. is currently nothing but mummies. I think I'll chill out here for a bit. Bit of a mummies boy. Uh, yeah. uh, da nah, nah, nah. <laughs> But yeah, they did actually come to genuinely love each other, and when she found out he was a vampire, she begged him to turn her into one as well, because she wanted to be with him forever. And Mm. he refused at first, because he did not want her to have to go through that, to become an undead like him. And then she was dying of illness, and he was like, oh shit, I can't can't live without her, because they'd fallen so deeply in love, and he made her a vampire. Here's a question: Would you, if if you ever found a vampire and they were like, "I can turn you into a vampire," would you take up the offer or would you refuse? Is it like, are we? Is it is it a Warhammer vampire? I'm thinking like what we do in the shadows, vampires, where it's a bit of a lark and you get to live forever. You can only drink blood or Mm. you'll throw up, but like, you get to have a good time. You know, Um, there's just some things like you can't go out in daylight and. Yeah, it's a it's a bit, and you know, you don't like werewolves. I gotta be honest, I'd probably flip a coin because I, I I don't know, I quite like going out with friends and doing stuff, but you know, as mm. long as I make sure to do it at night. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe if it was a Warhammer vampire, I'd be a bit more inclined, because the vampire weaknesses in Warhammer are, in one of the Gotrick and Felix books, one of them was actually talking about it, like this person was asking a vampire. Uh, who had recently been turned, and I'm not going to name any names to avoid spoilers. Okay. Uh, she was like, so what What? What about all these weaknesses? How did this work? What's What's going on? And he's like, well, you know, uh, for some vampires, you, t- you even look at the sun, you explode. Oof. Other of them, it's just mildly inconvenient. Uh, some of them can't go past rushing water. Others freely can. Water? They can't go past water. That's a, that seems really tame. That's a thing. Rushing vampires huh. can't cross flowing water. Huh. Uh, but at least in Warhammer, some of them can, because vampir- the vampiric curses seem to just randomly work or not work on certain vampires. Mm. Uh, like, some of them, if they even... Like, if they if you flash a symbol of Sigmar at them, they just melt. Other oh. of them will just laugh at you and kill you. 
So wait, so Sig is is this uniquely a Sigma thing or any divine being? It's like they can smite the vampires because like uh, Sigma, he's got that 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 Norse mythology influence. I'm like, so he he mounts vampires. I thought there'd be like a there'd be like a more pious any any God divine being can be pretty good against them. Uh, okay. But Nagash fought Sigmar and lost, and he was not impressed with the vampire's oh. help. So one of his additional curses he gave to them, which, oh, that's another aside. Uh, a lot of their weaknesses and curses they have, yeah, Nagash gave it to them for oh. because the, he was annoyed with them. Uh, and weakness to Sigmar's power specifically was one of the ones he gave them. So that wasn't even Sigmar's doing, that was Nagash doing it on it, his behalf. It was, yeah, Nagash basically oh. gifting them a weakness to Sigmar, because... What a dick! He's just the biggest <laughs> dickhead in Warhammer. <laughs> Sigmar's on his cloud with his, ham, with his Warhammer, like, don't blame me, I didn't do anything, and Nagash is just there, like, <laughs> on his throne of skulls or whatever he's, he sits he's, on. He's, I know people say Abaddon can be like a Saturday morning cartoon villain, but Nagash mm. just straight up is. Yeah, That's yeah. why I love him, because he's just an irredeemable piece of shit. Yeah. His oh. big hat. Oh, I love him. But <laughs> uh, t to get back to the counts, we now have uh, Vlad and Isabella, the power couple. Ooh. Now, I said I'd talk a little bit about what vampirism does to someone. So... It is important to note that in this setting, at least, it doesn't add anything or change, like, your personality. What it does right. is it exemplifies what's already there. So if you're, a, you know, you're an honorable knight uh, right into combat, you're going to turn into the biggest, like, warmongering, just crusader... Uh, who will refuse to fight anyone if they do not fit the exact criteria for honorable combat. Okay. Like, it exemplifies what's already there. Now, so it's kind of like the Captain America effect, where it's like, he was picked because he was really good boy. And yeah. That's why he became a really good boy. Like, best boy. Yeah, and theoretically, if some, you know, some, like, you know, decently charitable person became a vampire, they would turn into, like, the ultimate Mother Teresa. Okay. Uh, it's just that the people who become vampires are generally people seeking, you know, power hungry assholes yeah. or are turned into vampires by other vampires because they think they'd be good for their schemes. Yeah. So, it's a very gatekeeping uh, community. Like, we're yeah, only going to induct yeah. really nasty people. Yeah. So, there are a couple stories about uh, decent vampires. One of them. If you remember that Imperial Vampire Lady with the ridiculously long name from oh, the Empire yes. Quiz, that yes. was there's her. Uh, once again, in the Gotrick and Felix books, there's a vampire character who's actually pretty chill, uh, and naturally uh, slept with Felix because oh. F Felix is just puts out like no one's business. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, oh dear! It doesn't just turn you into a jerk, but it's just usually the people who are vampires are jerks to begin with. Yeah, comes to the territory. Yeah, and I bring all this up because Vlad, as you know, originally a fairly noble Nehekaran ruler, uh, you know, even though he took up a Dracula accent at some point, was you know a decent guy. And Sylvania, meanwhile, has just always been one of the last places you want to live in the Empire. Oh. Uh, it's dark magic has always been abundant there. Uh, Warpstone meteors crashing into the place doesn't help because Hell Rock is not what you want raining down, but in Sylvania it does. So, so but before we go any further, so you say Sylvania is in the Empire? Yes, it is officially. It was an independent province, and I'll get to its modern times later. It is okay. at least on paper an imperial province. Right. Uh, so in it's in that kind of Germanic from our map reference it's in that kind of space in the kind of yeah if uh half. if you'd like to base it off the real world because the warhammer fantasy map is like a screwed up version of earth yeah uh, go to germany and then go to romania and that's roughly where sylvania is located well that kind of checks out yeah 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 like, it's, okay uh, that makes sense <laughs> it's it's just transylvania <laughs> but they took I'm the from sylvania yeah oh, 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 not a 
not the cleverest naming for this <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it fits because that's where the vampires are around. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's beyond even like all of the evil stuff. It's always been there. It's towards the edge of the vampire, uh, or pardon me, towards the edge of the empire, before you start gaining the mountains where the dwarves are. Uh, it's always been somewhat underpopulated, and everyone there is both incredibly superstitious and un- uneducated. So okay. it's just not seen as a worthwhile province, even when it was independent and somewhat <laughs> under imperial control. Also, right. granted, I, I don't know, it's kind of hard to blame them for the superstition when you bury grandma and there's a pretty good odds she's going to come back and try to eat you. Oh. Could not say, you know, I wouldn't be superstitious in those circumstances, too. I can't have a, fe- a feeding ground, so to speak, of superstition. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, for the rest of the Empire, who don't have to put up with that, they're like, you know, they're just a bunch of stupid, dumb people. They're fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah. Superstitious uh, idiots. Ha ha ha, yeah. look at my gun go boom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but under Vlad and Isabella's rule, it actually got a little bit better. Uh, it helps that the, no- uh, again, Vlad was actually a somewhat decent ruler. Uh, he had a little bit of an anger problem and that if you made him angry, he was going to paint the wall with your blood. Oh. Uh, but Isabella would calm him down. Uh, she was the only person who could, in fact. And when he wasn't having these fits of rage, it was, things got better. Not by much, because again, it's ruled by a vampire and filled with dark magic. Mm. But better enough that the rest of the Imperial nobles and officials didn't really look into how the different leaders of Sylvania looked pretty much identical over 200 years, a couple hundred (laughs) years, because they're the same people. Mm. Uh, you know, they would change their names, so he wasn't always... He just occasionally wear a wig. I, yeah. Like, wear... I have a slightly... Di- like, I can just imagine Von Karstein putting on a big, bushy moustache, like, attack on one. Yeah, he... uh, Yes, I'm a completely <laughs> different person now. He, he... My name is Bobby. <laughs> I, come, I come from the Empire. Do not have a go at me. I'm Bobby. <laughs> he'd, yeah, he'd, he'd wear a wig and change his name to Blad. I cut down trees. It's fine. Don't worry. It's fine. Yeah. I'm not a vampire. <laughs> I'm just a silly guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know the taxes and everything also arrived on time, so no one bothered to do anything about it or mm-hmm. look into the matter at all. Meanwhile, Vlad and Isabella got to turning many of the nobles into vampires, which also, funnily enough, helped things become better because as vampires, they had to serve Vlad and Isabella who were, at least as far as vampires go, somewhat decent people. And so are they kind of beholden with the, the vampirism? Are they, like, chained to them? Yeah. The uh, they're in the, you're kind of bound to the person who creates you a vampire, or makes you one in Warhammer. Okay. Uh, it's kind of sometimes a little flip-floppy and how strong this compulsion is. Sometimes it's kind of like a little mental link where your master's like, hey... You should do this, and then usually because your master is a hundred times stronger than you, you do it. Sometimes yeah. it's more of an outright compulsion, like you physically feel the need to do what they want. Yeah, he's like, I've 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 invented a new form of cryptocurrency, and you're like, ah, <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what it's called. Okay. Yes, Vlad von Karstein, I will invest in your shit coin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, Vlad coin for the win. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and they even sired their own little weird quote unquote family of vampires uh, with Conrad von Karstein, who is absolutely insane, okay. and Manfred von Kums- or, all right, van- Manfred von Karstein. <laughs> Uh, also noun, <laughs> as you can also, uh, I'd like to give him some nicknames, as you probably know. I was mm-hmm. about to get to. Uh, we have Manlet von Karstein, Manlet von Kamstein. I was uh, going to say that was the one that you <laughs> slipped into briefly. I was like, oh, he doesn't sound like a nice person at this rate. Okay. Uh, Baldfred von Baldstein, the Baldening, <laughs> and the guy who sing- single-handedly caused the world to end. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm not a so... fan of Manfred. So the bold people are bad trope carries over very strongly into Warhammer fantasy then. Yeah, it uh 
it, it is a trope quite prevalent in Games Workshop writings, apparently. Mm. Uh, but, you know, they're not, I mean, you know, they're all evil. At least Conrad and Manfred are. But, you know, for now, they're in charge of Sylvania. Things are going decently. And then some lady found out who they were because she remembers stories of her grandma saying, uh, when I was little, I remember when the, the, the nice nobleman lady came, you know, came to power. Okay. And the the nobleman lady, when her grandma was a kid, it looked an awful lot like Isabella. And okay. then she did some research. She found out Vlad's real name was Vlad, same guy from a couple hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. And the secret was out. Oh no, even the dumbest Sylvanian peasant knows what's going on now. Oh no. Uh, the Empire was would have done something about it, except it was also around this time... Vlad quite dis- like decide or he decided he quite liked the idea of being the emperor himself. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's time for the vampire wars to start. Now mm. in Warhammer, m- most vampires, one even the weakest quote unquote vampire, can rip a man in half with minimal effort. Yeah. Two, they're all wizards. Uh, they're all good at vampire blood magic and dark magic and all that stuff. Okay. So, Vlad's army was walking into a graveyard, a lot of those in Sylvania, raising all of the corpses, and he just marched out. And the funny thing about uh, wars is they make a lot of corpses. Mm. So, whenever the Empire fought Vlad, he'd just resurrect all the corpses from both sides... And then his army got bigger. And this yeah. kind of just snowballed across the Empire. So George R. R. Martin ripped off the vampire counts for the Game of Thrones series. Uh, I'll, <laughs> say, say. I'll say yes, because I have not seen <laughs> anything past, like, season six of episode one of Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'll say yes, because uh, I like Warhammer more than Game of Thrones. Fair enough. Uh, so, that's going on. And sometimes they'd kill Vlad. Uh, it didn't work well. Because one, you can resurrect vampires in this setting. Uh, most For most of the time, you know, you got to do some specific steps and stuff to do it. I was going to say, it must be a ball lake if you're trying to... Like, it's not just like, oh, we just press a button. Like, there must be some skill involved. Because yeah. otherwise they'd be too overpowered. Yeah, for most people, it's not just press a button. Uh, but for Vlad, he had a magic ring. That oh. whenever he died, it just brought him back to life. Okay, uh, that's Nag- pretty cool. Nagash gave it to him and was also going to use it to control him. Except Vlad, being a pretty decent wizard, broke the compulsion curse or whatever it was that Nagash would have used. Okay. So he just has life hacks now. He just has infinite oh. Mario one-up mushrooms. He's like, cheers, Skelly dude. I'll have that, you idiot. <laughs> He's like, thanks for that. <laughs> See you later, bozo. Bye. So every time they tried... Uh, Vlad just would go no and come back. <laughs> and he got to the imperial capital of Altdorf when a thief managed to steal his ring uh, <gasps> with some help from Manfred because Manfred is a treacherous little weasel. Uh-huh. Well, uh, Ma- I've, I've never met anyone called Manfred. I'm just saying I'm glad that name's not around anymore because it's a bit of a weird name. <laughs> So it, it doesn't just it just sounds evil, doesn't it, it? It makes me think of Manlet, which makes me think of like yeah, inferiority man. complex, which makes me think, oh, bad person. Yeah. <laughs> I man- gotta be honest. Manlet von Kumstein. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so he's he's got the name for a reason. He's the worst. Mm. Uh so as Vlad gets to Altdorf, no longer has his magic ring. He dies in the battle as someone tackles him onto a wooden stake. Uh, both of them die, but good God, is, was that man a absolute mad unit. Just a- yeah. mad lad. Uh, and the thing about vampires, or undead in Warhammer, is they're all animated by magic. Now, this is okay when the leader's around, you know, like the vampire, the powerful wizard. Because on top of them being, you know, animating a massive army of the undead, they're also super powerful. So... You have an untiring undead army to just keep getting thrown and rebuilt and resurrected at you. 
Okay. The problem with that is, when you kill the guy in charge, the army starts falling apart. Mm. Because they're all held up by magic, and if you kill the guy giving them the magic, controlling them with it... Yeah. Uh, yeah, they kind of they kind of run out of magic. All right. So, Vlad dies, uh, and the siege begins to end as the army begins to crumble of the undead. Uh, Isabella was also there. Isabella Juliet's herself, because uh, she doesn't want to live without Vlad. Uh, kind, Pretty sad. Uh, love story mostly ends there. All right. But on the bright side, hey, uh, vampires are gone. Uh, oh. And then and then Manfred decides he'd quite like to try doing it. So, you know, a little while goes by. Manfred starts r ransacking the Empire. Uh, doesn't work again. Manfred gets pushed back to this place called Hellfen and is murdered. Though they oh. never find his corpse. They uh, they killed him, but they can't find where the corpse went. So, ah. three, uh, three guesses as to how well they really murdered him in the end. <laughs> And that pretty much brings up to what Sylvania is nowadays. Uh, it's just filled with it's just filled with vampires and the undead and necromancers. Not a great place okay. to live. Uh, it's filled with all those vampires the von Karsteins made, so they're of that bloodline. And every now and then, they just like to stir the pot and try and take over the empire and just whatever. Never. So even even in their like weakened state, are they still the most prominent vampire uh, faction, or are they kind of fallen from grace so much that they're not as powerful as the other ones? As far as at least the empire is concerned, yes, because the Lamians are again they're the vampire Illuminati, so they all prefer <laughs> to do things from the shadows. Yeah, and a lot and a lot of the other ones aren't really predisposed towards the things the von Karsteins try to do. Right. Like, the Strigoi are, for the most part, mindless beasts. Uh, so, you know, a Strigoi showing up in your town is a big problem, but it's not the mm. same kind of problem as some... But it's manageable. Genius. Yeah, it's it's a, if you throw yeah. enough knights at that, it's going to go away. It's not an right. undead genius wizard marching across your, your empire. Yeah. Uh, blood knights really just care about combat. Uh, if they drink the blood of a dragon, it cures their thirst for blood. So, the blood of a dragon. That's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, uh, not many of them do. Dark it. Souls flashbacks right now, just like a vampire <laughs> yeah. going up with like a sword. Like I'm just gonna hack into shins for half an hour. It'll be fine. Yeah, and so not many of them do it. And even then, because again, what I said about vampire vampirism amplifying your traits, they uh, they're warriors. They concern themselves with combat as like just for combat's sake, more so than to conquer. A lot of the time. Yeah. So they seek out tough opponents and stuff. So they're, in a way, almost not worth uh, trying to deal with for the Empire. Yeah. Because a lot of the time, well, strong combats, the vampires are going to fight chaos for a while. And that's just two yeah. birds with one stone as far as they care. <clears throat> Fair enough. And the Necrarchs, Necrarchs are their wizards, so they sit in their tower for a while do evil experiments. It's the the von Carsons are still the most prominent even after all this. Uh, never again quite as successful, but they're still the at least as far as the empire is concerned and they're the top vampire dogs. Hey. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they do uh, they do lose prominence for a while in the lore because they keep getting put down. So modern Sylvania, now that we're up to here, uh Again, it sucks to live in. Uh, it's technically not its own province anymore. It's a part of the Empire province of Stirland. But no one wants okay. to touch the damn place. Because ever since, you know, Vlad and all the vampires did their shenanigans, uh, it's just filled with so many vampires and necromancers and undead, even when they're, mm. that even when they're not actively stirring po the pot, it's just not worth it. I mean, to be honest, if you were a worker bee in the Empire, you, it, it probably smells. You don't want to be like, I'm going to build a like a, a house, and it just smells of rotten meat. Every like that, that sounds horrible. Like, oh, well, yeah. one dead. Ugh, yuck. No thanks. Plus, ev every horror trope you can imagine is in full effect there. Like, there's okay. ghosts. Uh, werewolves are actually not too frequent, because they're not too much werewolf in Warhammer lore. 
And believe it or not, I think some of the werewolves, once again, I turn to Gotrick and Felix, are actually followers of one of the Imperial gods, so they kind of keep it on the down low that they're werewolves. Okay. Uh, so I take it back. Almost every uh, horror trope is in effect there. But, you know, there's okay. banshees, there's ghosts, there's the undead, there's spooky swamps with monsters in them. Uh, and do the undead all kind of, like, clump together as friends? Like, oh, you're a zombie, you're a banshee, I'm a vampire. We get along, uh, or we just we just tolerate each other? Usually the vampires are top, the top dogs because they control, yeah. they have the magic, so they bind everything to their will. Uh, zombies don't have any... Zombies aren't actually really, like, personalities. They're just meat puppets controlled by magic. Yeah. So whoever is controlling them is the one the zombies are friends with. So the, there's no zombies without someone commanding them. They don't just exist on their own. For the most part, they can, but if they do, that's like it's a random lone zombie. Uh, okay. Just shoot it in the head with an arrow, and the problem will go away. Okay. Uh, but then you have Sylvania being such a focal point of dark magic that necromancers and everything love it, and vampires <laughs> and everything love it, and ghosts and banshees and everything awful that's not an orc or chaos related just loves it mm. so very few hamlets like towns there even the most populous ones do not number more than a few thousand at most it's just not worth it as far as the empire is concerned <laughs> yeah. uh, it's only officially under imperial control because it's a little bit easier that way for them to send witch hunters and the like to deal with the latest vampire trying to pull something hmm so, yeah, it's it's just it's a massive eyesore for the empire, really. It's like Cro how Croydon is to London. Like, oh, it's crap. Oh, don't go there. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's rubbish. Oh. Uh, it's it. Uh, I'll take your word for it that that city's fitting. Uh, it's uh, it's it's like Detroit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, like Croydon's like our version of Detroit. In, at least in London, it's just like yeah, don't go there. It's rough. <laughs> it's, it sucks. That's yeah. what Sylvania is. <laughs> uh, and that, uh, and because of all the vampire wars, it's also spread vampire cultists across the empire. Okay. So, and Sylvania is the hotbed of them all because they know that's where the biggest concentration of them is. So it's, it's like, a lot of the time, I don't want to say it's a war zone. It's like there's a shadow war going on where, okay. let's say you're a Sylvanian peasant. In the course of a week, you'll see, like, five different groups of witch hunters and their soldiers march back, march back and forth across the town. And then a vampire will march across, and then another witch hunter will come and kill them. And then so a necromancer kills the witch hunter. It's just really unpleasant to live in. Glasgow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's ignoring the fact it looks like it's straight out of an R.L. Stein book. Like yeah. The, what were those books called? Oh, oh no! Uh, the Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Thank you. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I can remember the theme song perfectly, but not the name. The <laughs> thing is, whenever I think of that theme song, I think of that weird Shrek animation version, and it's stuck in my brain whenever I see it. But oh well. Man, I got in a while <laughs> without remembering that. At least I'm remembering <laughs> the right thing. So thanks for that coming back. Mm-hmm. You're oh. welcome. Uh, but yeah, and every now and then a vampire will go, I think, I think it's time to recreate what Manfred and Vlad did a while ago and try and start okay. crap. And it's actually happened so many times that that hell fen place where they quote unquote killed Manfred, they stop numbering the battles that take place there because they think it just encourages the vampire to try again. <laughs> I was like, so well, they're not very creative. Like, cause I can imagine they could do a lot if they actually applied like Okay, maybe we should try something different, like go somewhere else where they might be able to apply themselves a bit better. There, Surely there's there's better targets than the Empire. There has been, uh, there was one, I, I, I bet you can guess again, oh, what what example is Colin about to bring up? What book series is he reading on? Uh, Gotrick and Felix. Yeah. I was going to say, is it Gotrick and Felix? It is Gotrick and Felix. They get around, guys. Uh, where Jeez. there was a uh, Lamian vampire, I believe, who was starting crap. At the edge of where the tomb kings, the mummies live, okay, uh, in one of the jungles, so they do get around. It's just uh, even in Warhammer Fantasy, it is still very you know the main human nation centric. 
Uh, yeah. Not quite as focused on the Empire of Man as it is on the Imperium and 40K, but they do mm-hmm. still have the focus, so it's just a matter of this is where all the authors are writing. Uh, I feel like they, they, they're they missing a trick with Norska, because it's probably like, there's probably so many bodies under the snow that it's too cold to get to. You could be like, raise all them up. I'm cold-blooded. I don't mind the cold. They... And you could probably do something there, but like, oh, it's not as appealing as the Empire, I guess. They can do that. It's just the farther north you go, the stronger the presence the Chaos Gods have, and they don't like yeah. the competition. Okay. Uh, Undead, undeath magic in Warhammer Fantasy and Age of Sigmar is actually pretty good at countering chaos because the way it works is it basically it flips the laws or flips the middle finger at the laws of both reality and chaos as much as chaos yeah. has laws uh, because you know chaos is ever changing and wacky and all that zinch stuff. And mortal beings generally are not sustained by magic. Uh, but... I, I just, I just like the idea of like maybe undead bear cavalry, <laughs> and the other like that would be cool. Like a vampire riding an undead bear that would be pretty to fight sick. chaos. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, the blood dragons mm-hmm. do every now and then go and fight them. It's just the problem of uh, bloodthirsty warriors who only care about combat. Corn is a big fan of when the blood dragons come knocking. Yeah. A lot of the enough. times, if they don't outright join Corn, uh, it's a big old battle where no one wins. <laughs> I like the idea that Corn has a tattoo that just says blood on his abs. And he's like, <laughs> I love blood. Look. Look. He raises his shirt like, see? It's my favorite word. Guys, come on. It's come amazing. On. Join me. It'll be a great time. We love blood here. He's like, three guesses where I've tattooed the word skull. You get a, you get, you get a bonus. <laughs> Where I put that one. First two don't count if you get them wrong. <laughs> oh. Now, uh, before we move on to the inevitable part of any Warhammer fantasy lore discussion, <laughs> uh, any any questions? Anything you feel might be a bit missing? I could clarify a bit. Um, so I'm just saying because uh, because this is this is particularly about the von Karstein and Sylvania faction. Um. It, I, I'm just thinking, like, it's, it must have been very devastating, that bit where you were saying about when Vlad died. Um, the only thing I'm thinking of is, like, how did someone get close enough to impale him on a massive spike? Like, that, that seems like a really, like, <laughs> big oversight. It's like some rando Calrissian just went, oi, oi, and just tackled him. And he was like, I'm in very close proximity to a stake. It just seems a bit, you know, uh... like, were they already <laughs> losing the battle quite catastrophically? Or was it lucky? Or is there any is there any information about that? It was basically after the, uh, after he got his ring stolen uh, by a man named Felix Mann, funnily enough. I guess if your name is Felix in <laughs> Hammer Fantasy, you're just predisposed yeah, towards points. BS, yeah. Uh, after he stole Vlad's ring, he was furious, and as the siege of the Imperial capital of Altdorf was going on, he was just like, all right, that's it, we're throwing down, I'm getting my ring back, let's go. Yeah. So, the guy who did it, he was, it was basically like an all or nothing thing, um, plus... Like, he wasn't winning the fight. Like, it was, uh, it was yeah. Wilhelm. He wasn't winning the fight against Vlad. He was getting his ass handed to him. He just saw that if I don't, if we don't save the day now, like, right now, we're screwed. So, yeah. in a Hail Mary, he toggled, he toggled, he tackled Vlad off the uh, battlements onto the spikes. I'm guessing in the, Imper- in the Empire's history, he's revered as a hero then? If he's they're, done that big of a deal? Yeah, they're, they're, fa- they're fans of Wilhelm. Uh, they even okay. uh, buried Vlad under his body, uh, <laughs> just to, to really make sure he's not just getting to rub up. It in. Oh, and then there's like, oh, and his his, his missus was just like, oh, we just buried her somewhere. Else. We don't care. <laughs> but like, we just want him to sit on top of his graves and just be like, Nina, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. look at my bottom. In all of oh. in all of death, you need to sit and look at the man who killed you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty wretched. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it though. <laughs> just even let like, the plaque outside, just like here is buried Wilhelm, blah 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 blah, and some other dude. And they just don't even mention his name. Like, oh, excuse me, some jerk, what is this? some jerk that he killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they. I think they also uh, 
stuffed garlic in Vlad's mouth, buried it on oh, sacred ground, and tied it up with silver Ugh. wire. <laughs> they were not oh, taking just any to be chances. Sure. You would have thought, like, just inter him in a silver coffin. That would do the job, wouldn't it? Uh, I couldn't find anything it's specifically like, That's quite expensive. I'm on not his doing coffin. that. <laughs> uh, well, it's a Warhammer setting. There's golden statues every five feet. I'm sure oh, okay, they would. They're yeah. sure they would have gone the extra mile. I was if just they... thinking, maybe, maybe the Empire are penny pinches. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, well, I know Marcus Kruber and Vermitide complains about taxes a lot, but <laughs> complaining about taxes is hardly a <laughs> something unique to Warhammer. Yeah, especially when you mentioned the the Gotrek and Phoenix one, where it's like the window tax. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know about that from real history. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. So you know, they have they have their taxes and penny pinching ways, but. I couldn't find anything on what the coffin was made out of, but I can't imagine they skimped on it. Mm. Yeah, you, uh, just, you could just literally fill it with cloves of garlic and then make it out of silver, and that would do the job, surely. Uh, pretty much what they did, except a vampire uh, strong-armed a grave digger into digging up Vlad's grave, and oh. it was empty. <laughs> oh, so he uh, might be around somewhere, or he's been taken. His body's been taken somewhere. I will get to him in the end times. Uh, although that being said, now that I'm actually just remembering it, a uh, uh, Gotrick and Felix short story. What a surprise! Uh, <laughs> someone tries to, like a cabal of necromancers, who have been trying to resurrect Vlad for a while, does it. Right, Gotrick and Felix interrupt it, and funnily enough, Manfred von Karstein also interrupts it because he does not want Vladdy Daddy back because then he wouldn't be in charge anymore. Yeah, undermines him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it half succeeds, and Vlad comes back, but he's like this bestial, mindless beast. Oh, uh, so it's actually cool. Gotrick and Manfred both team up and beat the shit out of the monster Vlad. <laughs> And and then Manfred runs away because he doesn't want to fight Gotrick because it's it's Gotrick. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get in trouble. Anything Kratos of it, the uh, of the universe. Yeah, anything in melee range with Gotrick is swiftly going to be unexisted. Yeah. Uh, but anything else uh, to let me put off the end times or? Uh, I mean the the only I mean before the end times I'm assuming that since they've been. Since the Silvalians have been diminished, they haven't done much since then. I'm a guess, I'm guessing they're like they're like one of those factions where they're just kind of, they're they're being a nuisance here and there, but they're not actually they're not like a main player. Or am I wrong in that? Assumption? They they kind of go through periods. It's like those vampire wars, and then things die down as the vampires gather their strength and get their wits back after the empire and the dwarves put them down. Because uh, the dwarves, a lot of the time, they hate the most of the undead. They think it's unnatural, which, to be fair, very right. Vampires are the worst. Mm. Uh, so, they the after they get put down, they kind of gather their strength. Um, and then in Warhammer Fantasy Battles, for a while, it was uh, gearing up to where you know every all the evil factions were on the march. So, you know, Archaon was getting ready for the great uh, invasion of chaos. Grimgor mm -hmm. was gathering to orcs. Uh, you know, Malekith was getting ready to take back Ulthuan. And the vampires, uh, Manfred was getting ready to do something real spicy. Okay. And sure enough, now we get to the end times. Uh, Manfred does something real spicy and resurrects Nagash. Oh, oh he resurrects Nagash? Uh, yeah, him and Nagash's uh, right-hand man, Arkin, uh, they kidnap the basically the Pope of the Empire, uh, so Nagash mm. can use his body to possess and resurrect himself with, as well as the daughter of the Ever-Queen of the High Elves, who, what they planned was, because Ever-Queens basically have a bit of the, they're like a composite soul, so okay. the soul of the previous Ever-Queen goes to the next, and then that goes into the next, and when they die, and on and on. And there's also a bit of the elven god Isha's power in them. So they figure, oh, let's just take the daughter, and then we get all that sweet elf soul power. Uh, and Nagash is even stronger. All right. Uh, doesn't work, because the previous Everqueen is still alive. Uh, and so this daughter, Aliathra, is really just a... It just... 
It's like when you want to move, like, you want to move a, a decoration from one part of your house to the other. <laughs> like, you want to put something on a different shelf, but you I... haven't moved it yet. Uh, she's basically, Aliatha is basically an empty shelf going to get a bunch of soul juice. Uh, okay. She doesn't have the soul juice yet because the current Everqueen, Alariel, is still alive. Uh, I'm just surprised anyone would want to revive Nagash, considering how much of a dick he is. I'm like, why are they like, oh, he's, uh, done, he's well, gone. You oh. see, Arkin generally thinks Nagash is the only, like, one of the only ways to survive chaos, which okay. is why he does it. Manfred thinks, I'm going to backstab him and take all of Nagash's power. And okay. then Nagash comes back and eats the god of the dead in the Warhammer world. Right. And then Manfred realizes, oh, man, I, I done. Uh, I, I, uh, I got what I asked for, didn't I? <laughs> whoops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Nagash is back. Uh, Volkmar the Grim, uh, the Pope's name, uh, yeah, he's dead. He's, he's gone. Oh. Uh, as for Eliathra, though, uh, funny thing about her, like I said, no elven super, you know, god souls in her yet. Uh, but she's the son of this elf called Tyrion, and that is important because right. uh, he has this funny thing called the Curse of Cain in his bloodline. Oh, that elven dude that gets that gets ganked by the Ultramarines. Cool. <laughs> we're in the we were in the other setting. Cain is actually a war god in this setting. He's actually good. He is. He gave Slanesh a permanent scar that never healed. Mm -hmm. he, he's actually competent in Warhammer Fantasy. Does he look the same? He does. Uh, n yeah. Not quite the same, actually. I'll uh, I'll send a picture of him. Uh, while okay. Uh, he it's Cause, mostly cause the same. Because in 40k, he's got like the sword and he's got the 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 volcanic flesh thing going on. I'm like that could be quite interchangeable. I would have thought. He yeah, it's you can tell it's like yeah, it's still Kane, uh, but he's a lot. Like he's, oh, he's okay. even spikier, and his sword is a lot, like, yeah, it's slimmer a bit more and more curved. Yeah, yeah. So you can still, you know, look and go, yeah, that's clearly Kane. But his helmet, like, there's not the his helmet's a bit different looking. Sword's yeah. different, a lot more spikes. Still angry looking. Still very angry looking. Like he hasn't had any coffee for a week, and he hasn't slept. He's like, I'm angry. Yeah. yeah. And uh, because you know Aliathra, the elf they were sacrificing to bring back Nagash and power boost him. Uh, has is a descendant of a, the bloodline that Cain has cursed. Uh, mm -hmm. Nagash just gets the curse, just inherits that instead of all of the elven god of life's power. <laughs> okay. Uh, but he's still stronger than anyone on the planet at this point. So Sylvania goes from being just kind of a shithole uh, to <laughs> Nagash's new home because Nagash goes back to Nehekara, blows it up, uh, takes his big old magical black pyramid, pyramid made out of warp stone, mm -hmm. uh, hovers it over to Sylvania uh, across several continents. He just floats it over. It can fly apparently. And is uh, is that a um, is that a parallel to a blackstone fortress, or is that just like it's also a pyramidy looking uh, thing? I don't think it's it's not really a parallel to a blackstone fortress because those are. You know, they're like the mysterious Eldar artifact thingy. Yeah, I was just thinking, it's pyramidic, it's, it's, yeah. it's like jet black, maybe it's similar. <laughs> maybe, maybe this, like, Nagash's pyramid was kind of an inspiration, but, like, those are weapon kind of things. Yeah, This is yeah. just his big pyramid that he made, one, to help him with magic, and two, to piss off the tomb kings by building a bigger pyramid than the best tomb king. Okay. Mine's bigger than yours. Ha -ha. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like something Nagash would do, to be honest. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, so he That's floats... why his hat's so big. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, my hat's bigger than yours. It's yeah. massive. And every time they're like, I've made mine slightly bigger. And he's like, right, fine. My two feet. Right. I've added well, two you know feet. <laughs> I'm going to make it much bigger. <laughs> Screw yeah, you. exactly. Uh, so that happens. Uh, everyone, like the Chaos Gods, are not a fan of that because Nagash has just shown, well, he just ate a god. We're gods. Mm. And his goals are pretty anathema to theirs. Like, he wants to replace Chaos with just Nagash. He wants mm. to be the unending god of everything. Uh, so, after he floats his pyramid over, uh, Nurgle demons try to invade Sylvania. Uh, and the Skaven do the funny, the funny explosion and nuke his pyramid. 
Uh, Nagash throws a hissy fit and kills the entire Nurgle demon army with one blow mm -hmm. uh, because his version of a hissy fit is a WMD. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he's lost his black pyramid that he was going to use to make himself stronger with, so he's getting, he's kind of out of ideas. So we leave Sylvania for a bit. Uh, Nagash is, by this point, he's back, so he's in charge of all of the undead remaining. So in the end times, for a while, the undead are really just Nagash's foot soldiers or whatever he needs them to be. Okay. Uh, he actually does bring back Vlad. Oh, that's uh, and, nice of him. Yeah, uh, and then says, "Yeah, I'll totally resurrect Isabella one day if you, uh, oh. you know, if you serve oh, me," no. and just holds oh, that over this. Vlad's head. Couldn't do one nice thing no, in his he life. Couldn't. No, he couldn't. No, he couldn't. Ugh. Uh, unfortunately, Nurgle demons resurrect Isabella. Oh uh, no! So that's not great. No, uh, she's a stinky. Oh no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so. As all this is happening, Nagash and all the undead go to the Wood Elf Forest with the big old fancy tree of life. Right. Uh, ally with everyone living by this point. Uh, Nagash, or not Nagash, uh, Vlad actually talks to Carl Franz, and it's a pretty funny interaction. Because by this point, most of the other elector, elector counts that could become the Emperor are dead. Right. Uh, so Vlad goes to, you know, Carl Franz and is like, you know. If you die, I'm a I'm I'm up to be the emperor, and then Carl huh. Franz just goes, "Well, you need to be alive to be the emperor, dickhead." Uh, <laughs> and since he's undead, he's not technically alive, so not eligible. Go back to where you came from. Yeah, before <laughs> I smack you with my hammer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and while that's happening, uh, Nagash and the living ally, and then it's time for the finale of the end times, oh. and so they all go to the. Uh, they all go to, you know, big final battle. A chaos rift is opening, much like the ones on the north and southern poles. Uh, the vampires are, you know, fighting chaos. The uh, or side of order is fighting chaos. You know, the elves, the dwarves, the humans. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the elves teleports all of the orcs in the world uh, to that point. And, <laughs> and now they're fighting chaos. Because uh, Teclis oh, is, is a bit of a broken mage. He is mid-max to the extreme. Just like the idiot who's just like, what are the orcs? Um, smash. They're here. <laughs> they're just they're, like, yeah, cool. They're here now. <laughs> <laughs> they're here now. <laughs> uh, to briefly get away from <laughs> from the vampires, because I like this, uh, Grimgor Ironhide, the prophet of Gork, nearly kills Archaon. Doesn't succeed. Uh, does Why break... not? That sounds cool. Uh, you know how Abaddon has Drachnion? Like, oh, yeah. The sword of the demon in it? Archeon has his own version of it, and Grimgor headbutts him so hard that his helmet with the eye in it that can see the future breaks. Oh. Uh, and then Archeon has to shatter his sword and release the demon in it to kill Grimgor. Right. Uh, but you know what? He still put up a good show of it. Ah. As for the vampires, uh, they're fighting. You know, they're doing what they can. The eight inc the incarnates, uh, which the people that... Uh, I briefly talked about the Winds of Magic in Warhammer before. Each, there's eight of them, proper ones, and each wind inhabited a person. Okay. Uh, so the ones that are left are trying to close this Chaos Rift. And then Manfred walks on the scene. And he goes, Yes, this is the perfect time to stab someone in the back. I Nothing can go wrong here. So mm -hmm. he walks up to the Incarnate of Metal, Balthasar Gelt, while he is closing the ever-expanding Chaos Rift that is threatening to destroy the world, and he goes, yeah, I think I'm going to stab him through the back now. And he does. He stabs <laughs> Balthasar Gelt in the back. Thank you, Manfred. Very cool. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Gelt dies, because swords don't belong in people's spine, uh, believe it or not. Aye. That's and, pretty bad for you. Yeah, not, not great. Not great. Uh, and then Tyrion uh, stabs Manfred in the back with a sword with, that has the power of the sun in it. So he oh. ultra explodes, cool. uh, which is a bit of revenge for killing his daughter way back when. Problem mm. is, the world is now ending because one of the guys who was keeping chaos from overtaking it just got stabbed. Uh, the elven wizard who brought all the orcs here tries to take 
Balthasar Gelt's Wind of Magic into himself. But he already had to do this with someone else. Uh, so now that there's a third wind inside of him, he explodes. Rift oh. is overtaking everything. The world is doomed. Nagash is crumbling into nothingness. Uh, the last living vamp, or at least one of the last vampires, Neferata, who was the first one, she's still around, uh, retreats to Sylvania with her, I believe it's her cousin, uh, who was a tomb queen. And, you know, that's they make up, because, boy, did they hate each other for a while. Uh, but, you know, it's the end of the world. The vampire and the mummy make friends. And the second-to-last bit of the Warhammer world's destruction actually takes place in Sylvania, as all of the remaining undead and living people still left make a final stand against chaos as it consumes Sylvania into nothingness. Uh, and that is the end of the vampire counts in Warhammer Fantasy, I'm afraid. So so they got they got messed up by their own top dog Manfred and he's like, Yeah, this is a good idea. Yeah, Manfred's a not dog. like thinking ahead like maybe chaos is a problem I shouldn't be interfering with like, nah, it's fine. Yeah. Whoops. Not Idiot. even enough brain power to go. Maybe wait till the rift just after the rift is closed and then step. Yeah. Like, nope. No, it had yeah. to be now. It had to be now. Setting needs to end. What a dum dum. Yeah. <sighs> uh, so yeah, that is the vampire counts and Sylvania, uh, von Karstein's specifically. While I'm at it, are there mm -hmm. any final questions? Uh. Oh, I should mention also that Manfred survives in the Age of Sigmar because, of course, he does. What? Why? <laughs> He got blown up by a sun sword. That's uh, not fair. I believe last I checked, the reasoning was uh, because he is still a pretty powerful vampire wizard, and Nagash can yank them around by their chain pretty easily. Uh, so, so hold on, but but didn't didn't you say that Nagash crumbled into bits at the end of? Uh, the it thing? turns out chaos locked him in a like this fancy magic crypt thing, and then Sigmar broke him out. And then they went on a buddy cop adventure for a while before Nagash became oh. Nagash again. Interesting. And betrayed Sigmar because these people do not learn. Their idol is Star no. Scream. <sighs> uh, but yeah, he's Manfred. As for why he survived, it's because, in part, because he is pretty capable. Uh, in part, because uh, Nagash uses his constant treacherous scheming to, you know, keep his edge sharp. And in part because he makes a funny, like, fall guy, so whenever anything goes wrong, Nagash just beats up Manfred like a chew toy. Would it be fair to say that Manfred is the cockroach of the Warhammer fantasy universe? At this point, I think it would be pretty fair. Uh, <laughs> I'd say it could also apply to the Skaven, but I think cockroaches are easier to get rid of than the Skaven. Yeah. They're, they're like the, the, the Tardigrades, you know, those little, like, bear micro things that are just like <laughs> we can ex we can survive explosions of nuclear proportions and they're like yeah cool but just more violent versions of them with teeth yeah and uh claws but yeah i i know like the ca the counts sound interesting the vampires sound interesting it's just a case of like they don't seem to have the best ideas of what to do with their time that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> no a lot of them, like, yeah. they could be so useful uh, you know, I'll give Vlad credit. He wanted to be in charge, and he almost did it. Uh, you know, evil, but mm. I can't fault him for what he did. He seemed to have a pretty, pretty good idea on how to do it, until he lost his magical ring and fought Warhammer Fantasy Leroy Jenkins, who tackled him onto yeah. a spike. You know, I can't blame I can't blame Vlad. Uh, the rest I was going to say, um, the other thing was when you mentioned like the dwarves, I know you got chaos dwarves, has there has ever been a vampire dwarf? Or is that just heresy? Off the top of my head, I can't name any specifics. I believe I've oh. read some lore where they are at least implied to exist in very small numbers. Uh, but dwarves I do not like vampires. Uh, yeah. They hate orcs and chaos more, but that's that's like a matter of saying, oh, this terminal disease is worse than the other terminal disease. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I, 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 I'm glad I don't have cancer. I just have diabetes. I don't like diabetes. Yeah, 
I, I know. I just like the idea of like a dwarf going, I'll have this if it can help me defeat the other factions I hate even more. Like, oh, I'll take this uh, on. But yeah. like really mess people up. Uh, usually, at least the passage I read, and it's been a while, I'd have to go back and find it, implied that it was more a result of the invasions than getting forcefully vaporized. Right. Not so much a dwarf was like, well, if I do this, I can <laughs> really mess up the orcs. Mm. I suppose the dwarf's just like, I need a sharper axe and a bigger one, and I'll be fine. And that's <laughs> yeah, all. I'll be good. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, they're definitely... The rest of the the rest of them, yeah, they're uh, they're not as big a threat. Like, they're not as legendary as Vlad or Manfred, so they don't mm. cause as big of a ruckus. But they do, like I said uh, at the beginning, if Chaos isn't the main threat, it's probably the vampires. So they do go, get up to shenanigans. shenanigans. It's just mm. a lot of the time they they need a they need a break to gather their wits, they they, need uh, to catch their wind. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't have either the North Pole or the Realm of Chaos to just retreat back to at any given moment. So they mm. gotta they gotta lay low for a while if they're defeated. Mm. Use the zombies as fodder. Like just take care of them for a minute while we catch our breath. It's fine. That's yeah. That's. And that's a valid use of how to how to do it. Tire them out, fight them <laughs> stupid zombies, and then the superhuman knights charge you down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I uh, definitely one of the factions I wish there was a more direct equivalent of in 40k. I love the undead factions in fantasy. It's a bit of a shame we don't have like an equivalent with. Uh... I mean, I mean the Necrons are kind of. Being they're that undead thing in 40k, but yeah, yeah. they're like they're kind of like the Tomb Kings after their you know that rewrite way back when. Uh, yeah, after, you know now they have all got wacky personalities and fight each other just like the Tomb Kings. But they're still like you know they're robot they're robots like they're not true undead they're like transhuman, you know crazy robots, mm. not. Like the you know proper undead, like yes, some magic dude is puppeting this guy's corpse and then doing that a million times over. There's no there's no quite Nagash equivalent to just be the worst person ever in 40k. Yeah, even even the stuff in 40k with like Nurgle is more like oh he's he's like kind of he's strangely naive and a bit silly. You know oh Nurgle is just like I'm giving gifts and being mm. a, a nice, but it's like mm, I don't know if. I don't know if like all that pus and everything counts as a blessing. A but, oh well, that's a bit of a nasty gift. And he's like, "Oh well, get my ladle, make a nice <laughs> potion." Like naughty boy, stop it. Yeah. And there, there isn't that there male like there isn't the malevolence I find of like Nagash or the vampire counts to an extent where. Is this not other than Abaddon, who's more of a stilted like? My dad was was going to be in charge, and then he got told off and obliterated. Oh, I'm angry now. Like there's there's not like no, the equivalent of Nagash. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it then. Fine. Or he My dad was cringe. Ugh. Or he shows up. He's like, I'm the big threat now. I'm going to be the yeah. worst person in the galaxy. You all can go to hell, and I'll send you there myself. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like I said, uh, I do wish there was something, but oh, maybe one future release. But for now, we just have the vampire counts. Mm. Is there a yeah? How was uh? Have you uh? Do you feel more informed on the faction that I accidentally left out completely? <laughs> I do, and and they're interesting in that. I I like the idea of like what you were saying about the the whole thing of like Vlad and his misses like having like. More to them than just being the evil undead people. It's like, oh no, they had like motivations beyond that, and that's quite interesting. Yeah. And I can imagine how the dynamic is where it's like they're not accepted by pretty much most of the people in the un in the the setting, and yeah, I I, I don't really want to know anything else about Manfred. He just sounds like a pain in the ass. But yeah, you know, the rest of them, you know. Yeah, yeah, he's the worst. Uh, I include Nagash because <laughs> at least Nagash is a dickhead on on design. He's just not a yeah. judge. He's not. It's fun when he does it. Yeah, he's like a Scooby Doo villain. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope this was a, a good little introduction. There's, as with uh, same with the last Fireside. There's of course a lot more, but you know these are the these are the nice little introductory little bites to Warhammer Fantasy for y'all. Hmm. So there's uh, of course. 
their armies, uh, you know, zombies, ghosts, more, all that fun stuff. But I hope this has been a good little primer to what the vampire counts are like. Mm. Uh, do please let me know if I've managed to do the same thing last time, just on smaller <laughs> scale, and miss some vital character. Oh, there is one more character I want to talk about. He's not that relevant. I just find it really funny. Okay. Uh, I don't remember his name, because his name is not even the important part. Oh. Uh, he just was like, I'm going to be the next Nagash. And at least by, you know, a while ago, he did have rules. And he was a powerful wizard. He was real damn good at, you know, being a vampire mage. And then the end times happened and came around. Nagash comes back. And he offers all the vampires, like, hey, you should come serve me now. And granted, it's an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> so most of them don't. But this guy goes, no, I am your equal. You will serve me. And then Nagash lights his head on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's no longer around he does the halo cosmetic legendary <laughs> thing where he's just like burning skull face yeah. yay he, got, he turned on grunt birthday party <laughs> yay! exactly yeah yay pop uh, done yeah there there was a, there was that guy like i said not really that important <laughs> in the grand scheme of things i, I just laugh every time just a fun aside that. yeah it's like i'm in charge oh i'm on fire <laughs> Yeah, we always like an upstart who has no credentials to do so. Like, yeah, yeah, like why no, not? No, oh, no. I didn't think this through at all. <laughs> I overestimated my powers. He's like, Whoops. oh, I'm way out of my league. Mm. Oh, but yeah, like I said, this has been the Vampire Counts. Uh, Brilliant. Yeah, make sure make sure you uh, I don't know, check uh, check out the last one for the rest of the factions that I didn't skip over. <laughs> uh, yeah, and. Tune in uh, suppose, next time. Any uh, any uh, teasers you want to give, Andy? Uh, I don't know about teasers, but I would say let us know in the comments if you want us. Like uh, one of the reasons we did this video in particular is because we missed uh, the vampire counts in the last episode, and people were saying we want to see stuff on them. So if you have a particular faction you want us to cover, and let us know in the comments, and we'll we'll have a look through because we read all the comments and. We, I, I guess we don't know what we're going to do next time, but we'll have a think, yeah. and uh, you have the power to influence our decision, so Indeed. bear that in mind. The uh, We like to keep the quizzes and the mainline podcast nice and scheduled, but this is a, mm. just like we said, a little primer to Warhammer Fantasy, so if there's any anyone in particular you guys got an interest in, let us know, and we'll, we'll take a look and see if I'll go through that one next time. Exactly. Make it the, make it the elves, make it the elves. <laughs> Don't talk about elves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for watching, everyone, and uh, have a good one. Right. Bye, guys.